hope many times i stopped going to church at one particular time i used to ask who encourages the encourager you can't understand you don't know what it's like to be me there were days when i didn't go home because of what was facing me your pillow see too much tears at night time three o'clock four o'clock a morning see you too much time up stop live really and just exist Mother, stop cry. Mother, stop cry. Mother, stop cry. I became angry, I became bitter, I became so upset. How many people really ask, how are you, and really want to know, how are you? I just feel somebody come around me and hug me up. People check up on each other. Reach out to somebody who appears to be strong somebody who you believe to be strong who you've never asked how they are and ask how you are and really sit and listen stuff from the cuffs stuff from the cuffs if you had it bad day and you're looking for a smile bringing hope and joy for a day that was wild Well, last time I cried was last month when one of my uncle them suffered another stroke and was unresponsive for a few days and then, you know, just flatlined. Um, but I wouldn't say I wouldn't call that no big cry because I never had no special relationship like that. So I suppose the last time I like, full on, full on cry was probably March. Yeah, when mommy gets sick, never, never liked the idea of mommy being sick, you know, because she's the only parent I have, and that is not something I can easily come to terms with. Probably that animated film, Coco, yeah, not not necessarily make me cry, but make me feel like I want to cry, but me never cry. But one thing where we always make me feel like cry or make me actually cry is that first Prince episode <clears throat> when Will Smith when Will's character, his father returned. And then you think everything did go, you know, alright after a fourteen year absence and then just turn up saying father just have this natural affinity to just abandon him. Yeah, that always get me. Um, what are things that make me cry? Not a lot of things, but sometimes it feels like I'm more empathetic than usual when we see certain things or see certain people, living conditions. Yeah, then that, that can put a tear in my eye. Son, boys don't cry. Sir, real men cry. Our brains are so confused it screams out why. You see, to tough it up we were hypnotized, yet as tough men we are quick to be criticized. As a boy you're told that you're too soft, as a man you're too rough, too tough like a cruff, all of these stuff. Son, boys don't cry. Sir, real men cry. Our poor brains scream out why. You see, we were created then hated, dated then outdated, and for what it's worth we Hurt, but crying isn't an idea even with which we flirt. We're devastated, but it can't be stated. If we cry, some are elated, while others say that it's belated. So in our minds, we're confused and frustrated because, son, boys don't cry. Sir, real men cry. Our minds are so confused that it screams out why. So this monster that some say I am is partly because of me adding a whole sum even in shows, real men are heroes, and no matter the pains, he rose. Wagwan Cufflinks fam. So recently I did a little poem slash video for another YouTuber, Life Lessons with Jason. And it was just a group of men talking about being emotional, or should men ever be emotional? 
should men really show emotions and in particular we looked we looked at the emotions relating to sadness the emotions relating to feelings of pain and hurt and expressing yourself such as crying or being sad now in the poem i looked at the fact that a lot of what men do or a lot of the emotions men show and don't show is because they were cultured to and cultured to not so for example men were cultured to be tough and strong so they're not supposed to cry they're not supposed to hurt if they're feeling pain physically or emotionally they're not supposed to express it they're supposed to man up and deal with it while you're supposed to be angry and you're supposed to be rough and tough and you're supposed to show uh, you're supposed to express yourself in a rough or boisterous way if you are not well you know you can't just cry and sit down and hold your corners man not do that and i wanted to share a particular experience in my particular life in my life i wanted to share an experience in my life where i think it was about 2000 and boy a long time good while I was in university and for those of you who know or who have been here you'll you'll have heard me speak about my mother not being well so for those who don't know there are several things so my mother did open heart surgery she also faced depression she also had two 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 strokes two strokes two minor strokes and she's just a fighter she's just a warrior but she's been through a lot and you know I've prayed about it people have prayed and declared and we've believed God for her healing and we've been trusting God the truth is God has been keeping her because doctor said she could have dropped down and died from probably about 98 any day we can just expect that call or expect to just see that happen and she's here in 2020 so she's a fighter she's a warrior but just being told that your mother can drop down at any time and to expect that at any time just being told that you know prepare for it brace for it and every single call i remember every single call from particular persons i would be my heart would be racing i would be so discouraged i would be so fearful that this would be the call to say mommy didn't wake up or mommy fell down and that was it and that can't take a toll on a young person that can't take a toll on anybody it took a toll on me it rocked me i was afraid i was worried i was discouraged i was i lost hope many times i stopped going to church at one particular time i used to be you know full of encouraging words to some people at some different times in my life and I just couldn't find encouragement myself and there were times when I was really discouraged and I used to ask who encourages the encourager who is there for the person who encourages when they are discouraged who there were times when I would lock off my phone when I want to talk to nobody there were times when I wouldn't express how I was feeling there were times when I didn't talk to anybody even boss would tell you say boy when she said she understand and she's there for me I know I'm in a year that guy you can't understand you don't know what it's like to be me there were days when I never want to go home. There were days when I didn't go home because of what was facing me. There were days when I just, if I go home, I go home late, I go straight to my room, I come out early in the morning and I left again because I would not want to face the reality that was in front of me. There were times when I battled with so many thoughts, suicidal thoughts. There were times when I thought that I should take action there were times when I was so low that I actually started the process of taking action I just believe that yo you don't make no sense to continue I can't handle this no more there were times when going to church made no sense I was there but I was not there people used to ask oh you do I'm going to say I'm here but I'm not here it got so bad that there was a time when people say how are you and I said existing and there were people who just say you're yeah, good man there were people who said no don't say that because that is not of God but there was a point when I never ever feel or see God I never feel like God did there there was a point when 
even when I go to church and I go to prayer meeting or whatever and they would ask me for prayer and I just sit down and look. I just sit down now on corner. When I talk. There was a time when it got so bad that I just said to myself that I'm not going to grieve over this no more. I put it under the guise of giving it to God and leaving it there. But the truth was that I did just give up. I never know what else to do. I never know how to have faith, I never know how to hope, I never know what to believe, I never know. See, when people pray and say, God says, and even when people say it is done and victory is won, none of them things never pass here, so. Because I've heard it so many times that I couldn't believe it anymore because I never see it. Now, faith is the substance of things, hope for the evidence not seen, but me never have eyes of faith at that time. I'm a reason with myself one time that, yo, your pillow see too much tears at night time. Three o'clock, four o'clock in the morning, see you too much time up. You need to stop putting your phone in at the wall. You need to stop lock off your phone and not talk to people. You need to stop. Stop live, really. And just exist. So I said to myself, I'm going to stop crying. I'm going to stop crying. Never stop crying. I became angry, I became bitter, I became so upset. I lost the real me. I lost the real me. I stopped encouraging people. I stopped messaging people. I stopped caring. Because I felt like nobody cared for me. I would hear bad news and it didn't faze me. I would be tearing up inside and I would refuse to cry. Cry, why don't even want tear to come out my eye? For a whole year. Yeah, I checked. I never cry. It don't make sense for crying no more. So that emotional side of me, that, that particular emotion, I lost it for a year. But purposely decided to lose it for a year. I became snappy. I became bitter. I was a fun to be around. Funny enough, there were times when I tried to be around people. And I tried to mask it and I tried to have fun. When I went back home, and when I knew it was time to go home, it was rough, it was rough. I started hating people. I started hating my life. People used to come to me and say, they wish they had my life and I'm such an inspiration, I'm such this. I hated my life. I hated some of the people who I thought were responsible for some of the things that happened in my life. I stopped believing that my mom would ever get better. I stopped believing that God would show up. I stopped really believing in the messages that were preached at church. I stopped believing in so many things. People would ask, how you doing? I say, yeah, man, I'm good. Some people would ask, how you doing? I'm just be like, how you do? Because I refused to talk about myself. I refused to share anything about me. I refused to tap into that part of me. I refused to express my emotions because it never seemed like it makes sense. Did people really care? How many people really ask, how are you, and really want to know, how are you? Some people expect you to say good. Some people expect you to, to say okay. Some people expect you to say fine. Some people expect you to say not bad. Whatever the case is, some people just ask it as a formality and don't really ask it for really feel or see how you feel and for feel your pain or to feel your joy. 
So what was the sense? A part of me died and a part of me wished to die. I remember going to one particular prior meeting and I sit down in a corner and I don't remember if this was the breaking point for me or the part where I, I started to, to heal and to become better. Before that, I remember even going to a prayer meeting and them say, God said for laugh. I'm like, laugh what? What in the name of my life for laugh about? I remember going to a prayer meeting and them said to me, say, God wants you to pray. And I say, dry. Heavenly Father, thank you for today. Thank you for bringing us here. Thank you for tonight. Amen. Something like that. Dry, short, sharp. And the person said to me, say, all right. That was the warm up, but the Lord wants you to pray. So I'd be like, yo, no, no, just hear me pray. I'm not really want to pray. I'm not get that. Open your mouth and God will fill it. I'm going to sit down like big man. Sit down like this in a prayer meeting. I'm going to say, all right, you're going to pray through me, God. Come and I pray. But that night at the prayer meeting, when they said to me, I sit down in a corner, they might pray and people are believe and I sing and I just sit down, I just dead it, because I'm usually dead it. I'm in the corner, I say, God, I just I never know if you really love me no more, I really care. I just wish like I could have feel your presence. I just really wish you could have just hug me up. Like I just really would have wanted to feel you, hug me up, God. I don't really know it's possible. I just would have really love to feel like you have said to me, say, my son, I have you. I'm just, I me mean, like, I turn my back to everybody else. I just feel somebody come around me and hug me up. And she said, God said, I am hugging you at this moment. I love you. I'm not forsaking you. You know you have cry. You know you have ball. You know you have ball. I'm going to put on a piece of ball in. That night there. I think I'll let me go and I still have ball. Just to think about it right now, more am ball. Maybe I had one year they just stood up in me just let But apart from hearing that and, and, and the healing beginning, the crying was also healing. It was also helping me to release. If I didn't release, I would have exploded and I would have done something terrible. I'm glad I didn't. People, men, it's okay to express the emotion called sadness. It's, like, it's okay to cry. It's, like, it's okay to find somebody to be vulnerable, to open up with somebody, to open up to somebody, sorry. It's okay to have friends who you can confide in, who you can express yourself to. It's okay to find different avenues to express yourself, whether it be poetry, whether it be games, whether it be music. Express yourself. People check up on each other. Reach out to somebody and ask them how they do. Reach out to somebody who appears to be strong somebody who you believe to be strong who you've never asked how they are and ask how you are and really sit and listen especially if it is somebody who is introverted especially if it is somebody who doesn't really talk a lot especially if it is a man who doesn't talk a lot especially if it is a man full stop because men in a Jamaican context in a broader context at times a lot of men are cultured to hold it and sometimes it gets too heavy to bear. Sometimes it gets too full that they explode and do something wrong or something that they shouldn't do. Let us all, COVID time, uncertainty time, job insecurity time, 
so many different things that are out there to cause fear and to cause panic and to cause people to just crumble. You need somebody. Somebody needs somebody. Somebody needs somebody else. No man is an island. We need each other in this particular time. We need to be more patient with each other. We need to be more caring. We need to be more supportive. We need to be more tolerant. Your mind, your peace of mind, your mental health is no joke. Don't treat it lightly. Put it as one of your priorities. Value it. Value your own first and value someone else's. And reach out to them, support them, care for them, and be there for somebody else. Because together we can, together we will. You're not going to have man talk about them things all the while. You're not going to have enough man share them things. But it is important and it is needed. Big ups. Big ups. Thanks for watching. Thanks for spending the time with me. Thanks for hearing me out. To somebody out there. One of the reasons my wife and I do this. Is to reach somebody else. To encourage somebody else. To let somebody else know that you can make it. God has got you, but we do too. In prayer, in love, in support. Truth is, sometimes it may not be as visible as you would want it or as I would want it. But don't believe that because somebody, the person who you want to be reaching out to, the, the person you want to be supportive, the person you want to care is not caring. Somebody else is. Somebody else is bearing you up in prayer. Somebody else is sending you a message right now. Somebody else is just caring for you, sending positive thoughts your way. Oftentimes it's just that we're looking in one direction while it's coming from the next direction. And because we want it from that direction, we ignore and we, re we refuse to accept it from this direction. But God don't always send the blessings through the window. Sometimes instead it's through the door. Sometimes it even comes from within. Sometimes it never takes somebody. But sometimes God wants to talk straight to your spirit. But because you want somebody to reach out to you, you refuse the word from God. I go. I've been there. Sometimes God wants you to encourage somebody or you to reach out to somebody when you are die for somebody to reach out to you. But that is God himself reaching out to you. And sometimes it is you reaching out to somebody else who will bring your word, your healing. I'm not start preach, I'm not start stay too long, I'm not start. You're going to make it. And this is coming from somebody who has made it. Big ups. Like, share, subscribe. Somebody else may need to hear this. Even if it's not through me, get something from it and share it with somebody else. No love. Cufflinks fam. Peace out. Stuff from the cuffs, stuff from the cuffs. If you had it back day and you're looking for a smile, bringing hope and joy for a day that was.